All right, good evening, guys. Welcome to our Tuesday night training. And tonight, we're taking things in a little bit different direction. We spend these calls most of the time talking about uh, things that will help you grow your business. And I feel like a lot of times the reason we see attrition is one of the main reasons is people give up on the products. And the people who tend to give up quickly on the products are going to be the people that are in it for weight loss. Because your weight loss customers are the hardest ones to please. If someone signs up for Plexus and they're looking to improve their IBS, improve their Crohn's, improve their blood sugar, improve their cholesterol, their um, blood pressure issues, pain issues, well, you're going to see that. Give it a week or two on the triplex and you're going to start seeing results. So your health and wellness, overall health and wellness clients are easy to please because the products are so amazing and you don't really have to do a lot to see those results. So when you're out looking for new team members, you really want to have those crunchy mamas who are all about health and wellness and aren't just looking to lose weight. However, especially those of us that are in the South, but really all over, when you have people that join you to lose weight, it's a completely different way you have to deal with those people. You cannot just give those people a triplex and send them on their way. It has to be set up properly with the right expectations. For, and, and the problem is everyone's body is different. There are so many complicated facets to the disease of obesity that a lot of people get confused and tend to say, well, I'm just going to eat less and exercise more and I'm going to lose weight. And that only works for about 5 to 7% of the population. For the rest of us, there are so many things that come into play. You have genetics and you can't control genetics. I like to tell people, let's control what we can control. We can't control genetics. So that's a small part of it that, you know, if you, if you have some genetic tendencies and you're predisposed towards obesity, you're going to have to work a little harder than the average person. I'm sorry, but that's how it is. And I'm one of those people, so I totally get it. But genetics can be worked around. No one can ever say, well, I was just born to be heavy. No, you were not. So you have genetics. Then you have your environment. If you, we live in an environment where we're breathing in all kinds of crazy things every day, there's toxins in the air, and you can't just pick up and move every day, so you can't control that. So genetics and environment, we can't really control. But here's what we can control. The problem is we take prescriptions, we eat food that has a lot of chemicals and additives. Many of us live a very sedentary lifestyle, and the new Western American diet is super heavy in carbohydrates and sugar. Carbohydrates and sugar are the leading causes of metabolic disease in this country. Go on YouTube and watch anything by Dr. Robert Lustig. L-U-S-T-I-G, Robert Lustig. Love that man. Go and watch the movie Fed Up on Netflix. You know, we did a screening of it on our team. It was just this amazing eye-opening movie. So we tend to think that people who are overweight, they're just lazy and they need to eat less and move more, and it's not that simple. All that being said, there is no miracle magic bullet. Everybody wants a magic pill or a magic surgery or something to be able to say, I'm going to take this and boom, I'm going to look like a supermodel, and that's not the case. So I want you to take what I'm about to tell you on a case-by-case -case basis, and the, the, um, the depth of how you do this is going to depend on the person. So the bottom line is these products are tools. You have to correctly use the tools and combine it with moving your body and changing your eating habits. Now, does it mean you have to go to the gym five days a week? Usually, no. 
Does it mean you have to never again in your life eat sugar? No. I don't believe in extremes and I don't believe in diets, but I do believe that you have to learn your body and know what works for you. Now, there are people who can simply take the triplex combo, not do anything else, and they're going to lose weight. And you just want to smack those people. No, I'm really kidding. Um, but that is just a reality. That, <laughs> that is looking at me like I'm nuts. That's a reality. There are some people and their bodies are designed to where they can do that. There are, are many more people who are going to have to do a lot more. So the things I'm about to tell you, you scale it, you can tone it down or scale it up a notch depending on your needs. You have to play with this. It's not an exact science, but you have to make an attempt to move your body. I don't care if you go for a walk three times a week, if you jog in place in front of the TV, you have to move your body period. We, God did not make us to be sedentary creatures. Our bodies were designed for movement. You have to move your body for this to work. So that's number one. You have to set these expectations up when people join. And if you don't, and if you don't check up on them every couple of weeks, then that's why people quit. So let's set up the right expectation. Number one, bare minimum, you really need that triplex combo. That's critical. You have to have that combination of body balance, hormone balance, blood sugar regulation that you get from the slim combined with killing all the bad stuff at night while you sleep with the ProBio 5 and moving all the junk that we kill during the night out during the day with the BioCleanse while we're walking and moving around and getting our digestive tract moving. So that being said, you really want people to start with that triplex combo. Very, very important. There will be times when it's not going to happen. You can't force people, okay? If, if someone insists on leaving one of those off, I mean, good Lord, I hate for them to do it, but I guess they could try it without the BioCleanse. But then you're killing all this stuff and you're not moving it out. So it ends up being a vicious cycle. But here's the other part of it. Let's say you get somebody and they want to lose 50 pounds. You get them started on the triplex and the block they're going to have to change what they eat, period. These are the gradual steps I would do. Unless someone comes to you and says, girl, I'm ready. Let's do a sugar detox, I'm all in, let's go. These are some gradual steps I'd like you to write down that you would start them with. Number one is cutting out all sugared beverages. That's a really good, easy starting point. It doesn't feel overwhelming. If you tell someone, cool, here's your products, now we're going to do a sugar detox. Some people are going to go, huh? I uh, think so. So start off with getting rid of all sugared beverages. No sodas, no juices, no sweet tea. Have them drink. Let them know that they need to drink more water. That's part of the program. You have to increase your water intake. So we're going to get rid of sugared beverages. We're, we're going to stop drinking fruit juice. That's just you might as well drink sugar water. Um, and we're, we're going to drink water. We're going to do unsweetened tea. We're, you know, we're going to add Mio and water flavorings and things like that. But we're going to cut the sugared beverages. That's number one. So if someone thinks they can lose weight by doing the triplex in the block and just cutting sugared beverages, great. You need to check up on them after a week or two. If they're not seeing any results, then it's time to take it a step further. Now, it's also very important that people are measuring. Ben, since we've been on our sugar detox for two weeks now, Ben has only lost about four pounds, but he can already tell he's dropped a size in his clothing. I've only lost about seven pounds, but I've dropped a size. So very, very critical that people measure. Do not count on that scale to be an accurate picture of things. So step one, we're going to cut out all sugared, sweetened beverages. What is step two? We're, we're going to cut out all pastries and confection type items. No more, no more donuts, um, uh, pastries, cake, you know, pie, whatever. Sugar desserts, we're going to cut all those out. We're going to cut that out. So some people taking the triplex in the block, cutting out sodas and sugar-sweetened beverages, cutting out desserts, they're going to see huge results. 
But if your body and your metabolism are totally jacked up and things are out of whack, that's not going to be enough for you. So what would the next step be? The next step would be to cut out bread. Cut out all the bread, bread and crackers. That person may still eat a little brown rice every now and then or a sweet potato. And the degree of, of how far you have to go with this is going to depend on several things. It's going to depend on your genetic makeup. It's going to depend on how active you are and, and how consistent you are on your products. So we've cut out sugared sweetened beverages. We need more. Now we've cut out all pastries and confection type items and all added processed sugars. You know, that's not working. Now we're going to cut out bread. If someone does that and they're still not losing weight, then the next step would be to cut out rice, pasta, corn, because we all know what corn is. Corn is to fatten animals for slaughter. Rice, pasta, corn, all of those things, right? So then I've had people go, well, dang, what am I going to eat? Well, you're going to eat lean protein. You're going to eat lots of green vegetables. You're going to eat lots of leafy vegetables. You're going to eat lots of berries. You know, you want to be careful um, saying eat all the fruit you want because certain fruits, pineapples and bananas, are crazy high in sugar. And if someone's struggling to lose weight and they're not working out every day and they're eating bananas and pineapple, that's going to hold them back. So the more you cut back the sugar and carbs, the easier it's going to be to lose weight. Start with sugar-sweetened beverages if you're concerned about someone being overwhelmed. Then move into sweets and desserts and sugar-sweetened treats. Then move into bread. Then move into your rice, pasta, crackers, and things like that. Now, let's say you do all this and you're like, oh my gosh, well, what am I going to eat? Well, I will tell you, I eat chips and salsa three times a week, at least. Salsa is great for you. Most of them don't have any added sugar. They're very low in calories. They don't have fat in salsa. So what do I do for chips? You need to go to Walmart and get you some of this. This is called Joseph's Lavash Bread. If your Walmart does not carry this or whatever grocery store, then go to Joseph's Bakery online and you can order a little case of this. It'll come frozen and you thaw out a pack at a time. So this is a really big sheet here. If I cut it in half and make two servings, then a half of this is only 60 calories. It's only one gram of fat. It's got four grams of fiber and it's got six grams of protein, and it's only got four grams of carbohydrate. What do I do with these? I will take this, I'll spray a cookie sheet, then I'll spray this with nonstick cooking spray, and I'll put some, um, if I want ranch chips, because I miss my ranch Doritos, I'll put a little powdered dry ranch on there and bake it till it's crisp. If I want, sometimes for breakfast, I eat cheese toast. I cut one of these in half, I will sprinkle shredded cheese on it. Sometimes if I want garlic cheese toast, I'll put some garlic, some garlic powder, not salt, and I'll bake it in the oven and make cheese toast. You make pizzas out of them. You can flavor them however you want, make chips. You can make wraps. You can, oh my gosh, what am I missing, Ben? There's just a hundred different things that you can do with these. And like I said, even if you ended up eating this twice a day and ate a whole one, a whole one of these is a hundred. If you ate the whole thing, it's 120 calories and eight grams of carbs. Lots of fiber, lots of protein. So this is a great bread substitute. Um, Cindy's asking, Ben, we bake these at 350, um, 350 to 375. 375. Okay, depending on your oven, between 350 and 375 until these edges start to get golden brown. And let me tell you, it's real easy to burn them, so watch them. That, yeah, these, these things cook faster than regular breads. So you really have to watch them. Okay, Ben was just pointing out they're very thin, and they crisp up really fast, so you have to watch these. You can't leave them and, like, go get on a phone call or something. Not good. Um, another good substitute is, I love these, these Olay spinach low-carb tortillas. 
This thing has got 11 grams of fiber. So there's only five grams of carbs and there's only 50 calories in this. There's a spinach, there's a tomato basil. I love these. I'll be honest with you, Ben does cheeseburgers. He does burgers on the grill. We cut up our burger and put it in one of these wraps. It's delicious. I don't miss buns. I don't miss bread. I am not beyond going, if I go eat at chicken salad chick and I don't want the crackers, I have brought one of these in a Ziploc bag and Allie doesn't care. One of the managers there is on our team. She doesn't care. I've brought these to restaurants in lieu of bread. They don't care. Did someone? Yes, Tammy. I've taken 34 degree crackers to chicken salad chick before. I've done that too. I've done that with you. <laughs> I've done That's that where I got it. But you know what I just found out? 34 degrees changed their recipe. And now nine crackers is like 10 grams of carbs. So I haven't been eating. No, take a block. Okay. Yeah, you really want them to take a block. But, and still take your block with all of this. It's going to be even better for you. Um, but yeah, I've taken the 34 degrees crackers. I've broken these up and made crackers out of them. Mission, this is another brand. Mission makes a wonderful low-carb tortilla. There are substitutes out there. You don't have to eat the traditional high-carb, low-nutrient-dense breads. I don't ever feel like I'm missing out on bread. I don't feel like I'm missing out on crunch. Some days I just want to crunch and I'll make crackers out of these. In fact, I'll probably ask Ben to go make me some ranch crackers tonight because that'll be my snack before I go to bed. He didn't get that hint, but anyway. There are plenty of substitutes for bread, okay? I love to take the Mission Low Carb Tortilla or the Lavash bread and sprinkle it with some cinnamon. And this is really good stuff. It's just sugar alcohol. It's imitation honey, sugar-free honey. I love it. I will take um, a low-carb tortilla and put some of this sugar-free honey on it and slap it in the microwave, and I've got a nice little sweet treat. This is good stuff. You can put this in plain, unflavored yogurt, and it's wonderful. You can put it in your shakes. You can, you can use it in... Can you use it in hot tea? I hadn't tried that. I don't know if it would work, but we can. Has anybody tried this in hot tea? I'm going to try it and report back. But this is really good stuff. So you, there are other things that you can have. You don't have to have the traditional high sugar, high carbohydrate things. You know, I don't miss candy bars. If, if you look out there and a lot of you are using those fiber one bars and special K bars and um, all these different, you know, nature Valley granola bars, those cereal bars, y'all, that's just a glorified candy bar. You don't need to be eating that. So a really good substitute. This is my favorite. This is the Atkins chocolate hazelnut bar. This is like a candy bar to me. I'm bringing some of these on my little road trip to Birmingham tomorrow. These are phenomenal. They come in all different flavors. Just make sure you get the ones that say, like see at the bottom, it says three net carbs. Get the ones that are five or less. There's a really good one, but I don't buy it anymore because it's like seven grams of carbs and it's an oatmeal something. I try not to do that one. <laughs> but you, when, when you're craving something sweet or you're craving a crunch, you can have all of that and not hurt your progress. So the more weight you have to lose or the more trouble you're having losing weight, then the more strict you want to be with sticking to these type of things. You want to make sure that you're getting a lot of fiber every day. The more fiber you eat, the easier time you're going to have losing weight. A great snack is a handful of almonds or a handful of pecans or cashews and some cheese, some block cheese, things like that. You don't have to go hungry and feel deprived to eat right. It's just a matter of being prepared. Does anybody have a question so far before I move on? No? Okay. If you do, just let me know. I want you to make sure that when you sign somebody up and they are 
ready to give this a go and really take it serious that you prepare them. You have to make sure when you're signing people up that you don't say, yeah, girl, you can eat whatever you want on Plexus because I've heard people say that. And that's just not true. There are a couple of people who have never had a weight problem in their life who probably could do that. But for 95% of the people, that's not reality and it's not going to work. And you're setting them up for failure. I would rather you not sign somebody up than sign someone up and say, no, 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 you don't really have to change what you, what you eat. And then what, they join for a month and they're gone? We don't want that. So I actually had a girl yesterday tell me, um, you know, Aaron, I just don't think that's for me. I'm just not ready to give up my potatoes and bread. I love it. And so I said, well, we can do one of two things. You can try the triplex and see if it helps you with the block, not want the bread, because that's the goal. In the beginning, if they just cut back a little, if you're faithful on that triplex and the block, and especially if you add in the edge and the ease, all these things on top of each other help keep that appetite curbed, then eventually you're not going to want those things as much. I'm going on into my third week on this sugar detox, and y'all, I just don't crave the bread anymore. Um, you know, I went out this weekend with friends and my girlfriend I hadn't seen in four years. She had a sweet potato on her plate that looked so good. And I just, I didn't do it. I got green beans and salad, you know, and it's just, you get to a point if you can help somebody really get off the sugar and the carbs after a couple of weeks, they're going to stop wanting it. And that's the key. I don't ever, I, I don't want anyone to be on a diet. I don't want you counting every calorie, counting every gram of carbs, counting every gram of this and that. My goal is for you to get to a point where you can look at something and know if it's going to work or not. And that all comes through trial and error and practice. So in the beginning, when you're working with your ambassadors, if you're not certain on what's the right way to tell them, then use your upline. You know, if uh, Vicky signs someone up and is just not sure how strict she needs to go, then until Vicky feels more comfortable, Vicky needs to put me in a chat with her and let's get this girl on an eating program and find out what she struggles with. If someone tells you from day one, oh, Lord, I struggle big time with sugar, then you know you've got to tell them and be honest. You need block to cut the sugar. You're, you cannot eat sugar and carbs and lose weight unless you are an athlete, you're a runner, you're, I don't know, have a, you're one of the 5% that have that crazy uh, makeup and genetic makeup where it's possible. For 95% of people, unless you are seriously working out, you've got to way scale back the carbs and sugar or you're never going to see weight loss results. Also, <laughs> the, for those of you and for your clients that are not trying to lose weight, the sugar feeds all the candida and all the inflammation and all the bad things in our body. Y'all, there's a reason why the um, Cancer Research Centers of America, that's why these places and MD Anderson are using nutritionists and they're putting people on low sugar diets while they're undergoing cancer treatment because it helps. It really helps. Sugar feeds all the bad things in your body. So even if your customer or your client is not trying to lose weight, if you hear someone telling you arthritis, if you hear someone telling you IBS, if you hear someone telling you, well, duh, diabetes, you want to cut sugar, almost headaches, all of this stuff, the more you can help people get off the sugar, and there's no difference in table sugar, Turbinado sugar, brown sugar, organic sugar, agave, sugar, 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 it's all the same. When it goes in your body, it's all metabolized the same way. Your body doesn't know the difference. Your body does not know the difference in a sugar cube and in a bowl of cereal. It all converts to glucose. We can pretty it up. We can call it what we want. We can take all the media hype about what's healthy eating. But I'm telling you, if you don't get rid of the sugar and carbs, I know I'm living proof. When I was so sick the last few months, there were many days when that's all I could handle was grits or potatoes or some plain toast. And I gained 25 pounds. I mean, I know this. 
And so to be off of all that just feels amazing. And I've even told Ben, my, our vacation to Hawaii is not going to be my license to eat what I want. I'm going to really do my best to eat. I will eat macadamia crusted everything, but hopefully stuff that doesn't contain sugar because I don't want to go back to feeling like that. I want to continue to lose weight and sugar makes us feel terrible. It makes you tired. It's a lot of why we have those afternoon crashes and the more you help your clients wean themselves off the sugar and carbs, the better their results. All right. So there's lots of options out there. There's lots of people on this team that are very experienced. You don't have to be a nutritionist like me. We have a lot of people who've been doing this so long that they know. And guys, we really owe it to people to be good examples. Try not to post crazy recipes on your page and pictures of brownies and cupcakes because you are advocating healthy living. Um, and no, we're not going to eat perfectly, but we don't have to advertise it when we don't. All right, I'd like to open the floor up for questions. If you have people who you know are going to watch the recording and you think there's questions they may have, any type of food, nutrition, product questions, I want to open the floor up for that now. Let me know if you have one. Nobody has a question? Be really careful with yogurt. Make sure you're getting unsweetened Greek. Be really careful with your almond milk and your um, coconut milk. We had one pop up in a thread tonight in our, in our group. You want to make sure you're getting unsweetened so that, and they actually make a vanilla unsweetened now, which is really good. You don't, and anything that's got a flavor is going to normally have sugar added to it. So be very, very careful with that. Um, be very careful with the foods that you think are healthy. You know, you have to, when, when your clients tell you, I'm eating healthy, I don't know why I'm not losing weight, you want to ask questions to find out what they're eating. If they're eating oatmeal, if they're eating granola, if they're eating, um, Ben, what are some of the other ones? If, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. He's got his headphones and he's doing something else. No, never mind. I'm sorry. Um, if they tell you they're eating, oh, Cindy, let me. Okay. So what do you recommend for people? Because we've been having discussions recently about breakfast and what to tell people to eat for breakfast, specifically the higher protein. Like I gear people towards eggs and bacon because I love bacon and high protein, but it's got the sodium issue. So how do you offset that? That's a good question. Okay, what you can do is, you know, Cindy's asking about breakfast and, you know, is it okay to do bacon and eggs and things like that? Yes, if you don't have really high blood pressure and don't have sodium issues, that's fine. But you can also buy low sodium bacon. You can buy low sodium turkey bacon. You can get link sausage, patty sausage. You can make an omelet. You can take some eggs and just throw all the vegetables in your pantry and the leftover chicken from last night and make an omelet or just make a big scramble. It doesn't have to be pretty. If you can start your day off with a lot of protein and fiber and very little carbohydrate, that's going to help keep your blood sugar balanced throughout the day. When you start your day off with oatmeal, cereal, donuts, bagels, toast, all the carby things, it sets your day up for blood sugar rises and falls, more hunger, lethargy, being tired in the afternoon. So, okay, aside from eggs and bacon and protein, you can do a good low sugar protein shake. You can do a bre you can make a breakfast pizza. You can do these are great for breakfast, these little Atkins bars. You can do um you can do some nuts and some cheese, whatever you like, as long as you keep the starch and sugar out of it. Um, uh, there are some days when for breakfast, I will get a handful of almonds, some strawberries, and a chunk of cheese. And that, that's it. I'll tell you another one I like. There are, there's a, um, a cream cheese that's like, a, you can't get the sweet flavored ones like honey, strawberry, but there's, um, I like the salmon one. I like the garden herb. I like the sour cream and chive. I'll take one of these low carb bread options and I will just spread some, um, like a good flavored cream cheese on there and I'll have that. 
um, guys who are on, what other breakfast ideas can, can you give Cindy that you do that are low in carbs and higher in fiber and protein? Does anybody want to share one that they do? Shakes with the P96 are great. Adding berries and stuff to them. And it doesn't have to be traditional breakfast food. It can be anything you want. Um, I know we covered a bunch, but some of my veterans, do you have some breakfast ideas? I've been doing some, um, the Oikos vanilla, like a half a cup of that with half a cup of blueberries. The Oikos, the triple zero? Yeah, the triple zero. Well, those are really good. Those Oikos triple zero yogurts have no added sugar, no, it's called triple zero because it's zero added sugar and zero two other things. What is it, Tammy? I forgot. I can't remember. Those are really good because the only carbs in there are the naturally occurring dairy carbs. And the naturally occurring dairy sugar is not going to affect your bloodstream as much as sugar, sugar and fructose type sugar. So... But yeah, that's a good one. You can do the Oikos yogurt. I've done it with almonds and nuts in it. You can do it with berries in it. Um, you know, you can make you a little parfait. Anybody else have some breakfast ideas? Those are all really good. There's really nothing you can't do. I love the idea of an omelet or a scramble because you can take whatever's left over and throw it in there. Whatever veggies are in the fridge, whatever you know, leftover stuff that you have from the night before, whatever protein you had the night before. The egg cups, how did we not mention egg cups? Egg cups are my favorite. Oh my goodness, raise your hand if you love egg cups. I make egg cups probably once a week. And Cindy, what the egg cups are is you take a muffin tin, like a, a six slot muffin tin, and in the bottom put whatever protein you want. You can put link sausage, you can put chicken, you can put shrimp, whatever, ham, turkey, whatever you want. Then put on top of that whatever cheese you, you want. And then you break an egg in each one, put some salt and pepper, bake it. And they come out little egg muffins, egg cups. Those are awesome. I love those. And if you're busy, those are good because you could make a dozen of them. And we put them in Ziplocs, two in a Ziploc. And you can, you know, pop that in the microwave on the way out the door. and They, they keep pretty well. Hey, Heather. Heather's on. I'm so excited. With her being in such an early time zone, she's rarely able to be online. This is a treat. All right. Well, I, Erin. Go ahead. Oh, uh, remember my breakfast casseroles that I make? So basically, it's the egg thing. And so uh, we just, I just take whatever veggies, cheese. I had some um, pork that I had left over. And I just make a whole casserole dish of it. And you can follow any recipe. I don't add any carbs, just veggies. And then you can cut it on it and eat it in the whole family or whoever. It works great. And, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because I've done one where I take a little small square pan, like a baking casserole dish, but the small one, and I'll line it with this. And so this becomes like a crust and I do what you're talking about and just whip up some raw egg and veggies and maybe a protein. And I pour that mixture into that bowl over this, where this becomes the crust of it. I think Tammy's had that at my house before. Um, and that's really good too. You know, there's, there's a lot you can do with, with eggs and protein and, Vegetables, just try to keep the sugar out and you'll be good. We're talking about breakfast options. All right, any other breakfast comments or questions? So lunchtime. I think it's important that you help people be prepared at lunchtime. You know, let people know that it's so easy to bring their lunch to work, it doesn't have to be complicated. Make a wrap, make a salad. Um, and be sure when you're buying salad dressings that you never buy one that says low fat. If it says low fat, then it's got tons of added sugar, tons of added carbs. Just buy regular old. The best one you can do is ranch dressing. And if you don't like ranch, 
and you're un-American and I can't be your friend. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. Um, if you don't, if you don't like ranch, you can do, um, any other dressing that you see is low in carbs and doesn't have a lot of sugar. A lot of your herb vinaigrettes, um, a lot of your Caesar dressings, a lot of those don't have a lot of sugar in them. You want to stay as low in sugar as possible and just pile on the veggies Pile on, you know, seeds and nuts. Those are all great. Make yourself a big salad. There's a lot of days when if Ben can get home for lunch, he'll stop at the store and get a rotisserie chicken. And when he gets here, I'll have sunflower seeds sitting out. I will have boiled a couple of eggs and chopped them up. We'll have shredded cheese. We'll have sometimes green bell pepper, onion, whatever. And we'll just throw together a big salad. Just keep it simple, but keep the sugar and the carbs out of it. And the same thing at dinner time, you know, make a meat and a couple of vegetables. You don't always have to have a starch. That was some crazy tradition that got started back in the 50s. Now, unless, you know, you're doing a lot of, if you're an athlete, you're a runner, my son's a runner, he needs starches. But if you're struggling with your weight, you know, get your starches from nuts and from beans and things like that. Like tonight we had pork chops and lima beans. You know, we didn't really have a starch. We got our starch from the lima beans. So, all right, guys, any other questions I can answer? There went my little runner. Just going through there. Um, any other questions I can answer for you about eating healthy, helping your customers? I think when you sign people up, you have to be super honest and set them up the right expectations, and you will not lose them. If they know what to expect, if they know they've got to give it 30, 60, 90 days, it's not overnight. If they know they're going to have to stop eating Krispy Kreme, then I think you're going to be more likely. Yes, Ben, you have to stop eating Krispy Kreme. Um, then you'll be more likely to keep them. So can I answer any more healthy eating questions before we go? Comments? Something maybe I didn't cover that you'd like to share with everybody else? I I'm, I'm love having ideas from all of you. Feel free to unmute yourself and pop in. Dang, y'all are quiet. You didn't mention carb quick. <gasps> oh, that's a travesty. Oh, I know, Ben. I know. I'm telling you, this FTS brain fog. Ben, would you go grab the box of carb quick so I can show it to him? Oh, Cindy, thank you, my friend. Oh, my God, that's bad. Okay. Carb quick is like the best thing in the world. Um, every human on the planet, like we all should have probiotics, we should all have carb quick. I'm going to show it to you. Carb quick, you all know what bisquick is, right? It's exactly like bisquick, but it's low carb. You use it in anything that you would use Bisquick in, and it's really, really, really good. This is Carb Quick. You get it on Amazon. Bell, go away. I don't have food for you. Um, you get this on Amazon.com. Just buy the two-pack because you're going to go through it. And if you make a batch of garlic cheddar biscuits, like the ones at Red Lobster, a whole batch of those, a batch for me makes like 24 little biscuits they have a half a carb in each one and the fiber content um so a third of a cup of this has two grams of carbs and 14 grams of fiber so two cups of this two cups of this is what eight grams of carbs am i doing that right no i'm sorry two Two cups of this is 12 grams of carbs because it's a third of a cup has two grams. Y'all, this stuff is the bomb. I made chicken pot pie with it. I make cookies with it. I make biscuits with it. Who has carb quick and has made some cool stuff with it? Does anybody want to share something they've done with this? This will really help you not miss biscuits. Cheddar garlic biscuits. You can throw some bacon bits in too. Heather, did you? Let me unmute Heather. I think she had something to say. Go ahead, Heather. 
Oh, yeah. For people that have gluten um, sensitivities, which mine's not as strong since I have done the probiotic, it's healed my stomach a lot. But there are alternatives for that, too, or other types of baking. Um, so I use almond flour or coconut flour. Like, this is coconut. The almond, almond I get a fine... Um, a fine ground and I get it in bulk at my nature store. They even once in a while get in even mixes that use almond and they don't add sugar or anything to them. And like this is a pizza crust that's almond flour. I love almond flour. I've made almond flour crust before and it's really, really good. Almond flour is wonderful. I've never tried the coconut flour. Is it as low in carbs as the almond flour? Um, it may has a little bit more carbs, but generally I use it as a blend sometimes. Okay. And it's a you have to learn how to use it, and you kind of use it sometimes in blend with um, almond flour. But it still is a good option because it's got a lot of fiber, so you're going to balance out. Oh, yeah, yeah. The fiber takes away. You always subtract the fiber from the carbs to get the net. And that is a, that, I'm really glad you brought that up for someone that has, um, that has to be gluten free, for someone with celiac or gluten intolerance. Those are very, very good options because all the bread options that I showed you, those have, um, they're going to have a little bit of gluten in them. They're not totally gluten free. But also know this unless you truly have a gluten intolerance or celiac, you don't have to go totally gluten-free. But because I know some people think, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have these gluten-free cookies and I'm going to lose weight. No. Organic, gluten-free doesn't mean it's good for you. But if you are someone like Heather who has a gluten intolerance, then those are fantastic options for you. All right, guys. Well, this is fun. If you have any other questions that I can answer before we go, Ask me now, and if you think of some later, I'll post the recording, and you can um, comment on the recording. Does anybody else have any last thoughts? Well, let me just tell you, I'm proud of you guys. We've had a great month. Um, we had some people that had some really nice increases in points. We've had some people go silver this month. I'm really proud of y'all, and I have a really, we have one day left, so if you haven't gone silver for the month, you're not out of time, but our September incentive is going to be a blast. Um, it's going to be just a whole lot of fun, something like we've never done before. And Ben's over there grinning because he's already seen the graphic. Um, and I'm going to post that tomorrow night or, I'll, or maybe I'll do it Thursday morning. So, all right. I love you guys. Uh, if you need me, Nita has kindly offered to drive tomorrow because I've been having such a rough couple days. So I will be able to answer messages because now I will be a passenger in the car. So holler at me if you guys need me and I hope y'all have a great night. All right. Love y'all. Bye.